everyone, this is Persephone and I'm going to be putting a lot of effort in this channel from now on because I shouldn't be addicted to easy money from many bids and only fans and put effort here although it's basically much lower pay. So today we're going to talk about the right mindset when it comes to feminization because recently I had to make the very, very unpleasant decision of ditching a CC that has been my CC for a year. And I'm going to use this person as an example of what not to do. Of course, not uh, saying anything that would compromise their privacy, but maybe you're going to see yourself in some of these problems. And if after finishing this video, you want to work with me and be serious about feminization, the way to serve me starts above from OnlyFans. So now to the point, this person approached me about a year ago saying that they were very interested in having a paid mistress for feminization guidance and I say paid because you can find the mistress to date through FetLife and through my other strategies on this channel but they wanted me specifically so I said okay let's talk and see what does this person want to do and at first sight they looked very promising this person was retired they had a job in the past in the IT section so they had a lot of money and because of retirement they also had a lot of time and they were married and living in a first world country and their wife was kind of like not exactly enthusiastic about it but it seemed to me it was some don't ask don't tell situation like she wouldn't pry on their privacy she wouldn't go through their stuff and unless the person became extremely passable to the point that they would want to live as a woman openly the occasional feminization and fun would not be off the record the way i understood it from our discussions so we start and as months are passing and i say months because i need to be less patient from now on lesson learned the person was nice and they weren't contacting me all the time so that's why this dragged longer than it should have i started to realize that they are great at talking the talk but they don't do anything when it comes to walking the walk so this person had written so many stories about their feminization and they wanted to go to sephora and other places to do makeup training and they wanted to buy bras and panties and dresses and they wanted to practice posture and practice talking in a feminine way so all of those were great but they were going through circles of buying a bunch of stuff and then feeling bad and purging them if you're not familiar with this behavior it's unfortunately similar to people who have eating disorders that they go through a stage of hoarding a bunch of stuff that they're used for feminization and then throwing them away, discarding them, destroying them and causing drama. So at first I was patient because they told me some things about their upbringing, that they had a mother who was extremely like shaming and critical when it comes to anything that wasn't into the extremely strict traditional gender roles. And I waited to see if there is going to be progress. There was none. So basically, after some time, I started to realize that this person doesn't want to do any feminization whatsoever. It was like they were paying me to sit there and hear them talk about their feminization fantasies. And now I know what a lot of people are going to think, both people who are not in the fandom and people who are in the fandom. Are you crazy? Like, don't you want to sit there and listen to someone talk about their fantasies and get paid? Like, does it get any easier than that? Have you gotten to the point that you want to breathe and get paid? Actually, it wasn't as easy as just sitting down and listening to someone's stories. And I'm going to explain why, and I don't want to king shame anyone, but I believe we do real fandom here, and we can't do real fandom without me being honest with you. Problem number one is that these stories were extremely repetitive. There is only so many times I can hear about the same one fantasy or the same ten fantasies over and over and over. Problem number two is that this person had a very misogynistic idea about feminization that I realized after again some months they were obsessing over specific things women wearing pantyhose women wearing a full face of makeup i wanted to rip my hair off if i hear this expression like one more time the full face of makeup and women working at an office it's like women were reduced to that tiny stereotype and i believe that women are much more complex than just putting on a pair of pantyhose and putting on some makeup and working at an office. If you do these things, great, you do you, but you are a cross-dresser. 
you're not a woman and definitely this is not feminization training i don't know where they got this obsession for from i'm not a mental health professional i don't try to substitute one so i suggested they see a therapist and they reacted extremely hostile and negatively towards that so the idea of therapy was dropped so i don't know where they got this stuck up idea that women are a pair of pantyhose a full face of makeup and work at an office like what women cannot do other jobs besides working at an office the other problem was that this person had an extremely toxic relationship with their wife one of the things that i really don't like at all about this job is when people have partners who are unsupportive that's not necessarily their fault because some people discover their sexuality later on but they do absolutely nothing to solve the problem they would come to me and whine and whine and whine. My wife is mean to me. My wife doesn't want to talk to me. She's out all day with other people. And I would ask them, like, what do you do for your wife? When was the last time you took, it, took her out to eat dinner together or to do something fun together? And constant trust talking of their wife. When, after some point, I logically asked, do you plan to leave this woman since they make you so unhappy? The answer was no, they cannot leave. They were living in a first world country, but they were originally from the US and they didn't want to go back to the US too. I'm not the type of person that I have the patience to listen to the same stories and the same problem without any effort from the person's side to resolve them. This is very triggering to me because it reminds me of my family. They have been complaining about the same things for centuries. You don't want to leave your wife, you don't want to do consistent feminization, you discard your stuff, you complain all the time and... I'm going to tell you, as someone who is from a privileged background, this is all first world problem bullshit. There are people who are poor and they want to be feminized. There are people who are in countries where being gay can actually get you killed or being trans or even simply want to be to try a dress on. So you are sitting there in your first world country in a pile of money complaining. And what I heard is like the usual blackmail. Oh, mistress, I would love to move to where you are. If only I could do that. Just let me move in with you and feminize me. I'm going to be a bit blunt here. I'm trying to phrase it in a nice way. What's in there for me to do that? Like, I have hundreds of scissors to pick from. I don't like to brag, but I have to be honest. So why would I choose if I ever wanted to live with a sissy? Because at my current stage, after I've been in so much compounded trauma in this year, that, like, it has been more traumatic this year than the last 15, I don't want to live with anyone. But if, let's say, I wanted to live with someone and I wanted to feminize them, why would I pick someone who doesn't do anything? who is constantly complaining and who is using extremely misogynistic stereotypes and refuses to change them even when we discuss them. Femininity is so much more complex and so much more difficult than just putting on a dress and makeup. I wish it was that easy. I would just be feminizing people right and left, becoming a millionaire, and everyone would be happy. Even for females assigned at birth, there are entire YouTube channels dedicated to being feminine. So. I know this person isn't going to do the work, so well, it was about time we part ways semi-amicably. It, a block was involved, but I don't regret it. So I'm making this video to tell you my opinion about the right mindset for feminization. Again, there is not a one-fit-all mindset or rule. You should experiment and do what works for you. But I want to at least start the discussion. Like, when you think about feminization, are you mentally prepared that this shit is going to be hard? that you're going to have to suffer because essentially nature doesn't even work. It's not on your side. You're going to have to go above and beyond if you want to be passable. You're going to have to do things that they're going to be painful and difficult and repetitive for months and for years to achieve the results that you want. Are you prepared to go through hormones, through surgeries, through altering your diet, eating things you don't want to eat, wearing uncomfortable clothes? Practicing feminine mindset with me, which is so much more than just wearing lipstick. Because the worst thing for me is when I see a sissy and she's so gorgeous and you could think like she's totally passable. And then she opens her mouth and I'm like, oh my God, this is a man talking. That there are things that a woman would never say and you need to be trained to do these things. So it's going to be difficult. I'm not saying this to discourage you. I'm saying this because... For world is for art. I love this American expression. So if you are not prepared, it's totally fine to do feminization as a hobby, to wear a dress once in a while, to experiment with makeup, to go out, hook up with a guy who's into scissors, whatever you want to do. I just don't want to be a part of it. So I'm setting this boundary here. If you're not serious about feminization, please don't contact me. I don't want any more scissors like this one. It's a waste of your money and my time and it's going to take us nowhere.
And also I feel that there are so many people trying to manipulate me that they watch my channel, which is a very big problem for me at this point. They understand, kind of get an idea about what kind of person I am. They try to tell me what they think I want to hear. So they mask all of their problems and their personality. And after a few months, the mask collapses because I'm not stupid. So if you want to do it just in the bedroom or once in a while or as a fun thing, great. You don't need me personally. Just watch some videos, read some great guys who are out there, experiment by yourself, and it's fine. There is not a one way to do things. Same time, feminization should be fun. Now you're going to say, oh my God, so many contradictions. How can it be extremely hard and also fun? It can. For the right challenges, for things that you really want to do, I think you can actually enjoy even the hardship. And some people are going to see only hardship, where some people are going to see an adventure or a challenge. And... They're going to have pride of self afterwards when they overcome a feminization milestone. So it's totally up to how you want to see it. If you want to see problems, you're going to see only problems, of course. And last but not least, to not make this video, oh my God, we're already at 11 minutes, I'm rambling. I don't see feminization as something humiliating. So if you're going to say the question I get, if I had a dollar every time I got this question, I would be a millionaire, you wouldn't see me here anymore. Why do you like feminization? I am bisexual. I like 80% men, 20% women, but I still like some women. So for me, the idea and seeing and exploring a person who is transforming from an attractive male to an attractive female is actually something erotic and exciting. It's not humiliating. So I think that someone, again, has a lot of internalized misogyny. If they come to me and they say feminize me to degrade me, I'm not into that. I don't want to do that. I know I have done a lot of things in the past when I was poorer and when I was more inexperienced, but now I am in a good enough place to set my own boundaries and say that for me, if you want to explore your feminine side or if you are bi or if you think about transitioning or even fantasizing or anything in all of that like huge area of different kinks, you are very welcome to try it with me. If you say, you know, I want to be humiliated by being made a woman, isn't that misogynistic? Don't you inherently see women as inferior to men? Otherwise, why would you feel degraded by presenting yourself as a woman. I don't want any part of that. Again, I try so hard, it's just a, just a very difficult, delicate balance to not kink saying, but I also want to affirm my own preferences and boundaries, and I'm not interested in that. When it comes to cuckolding and feminization as a way to submit to the alpha male in the cuckolding, that's a whole different mindset and story. I, I can make a video about that too, but Again, it has to be something that turns you on to some degree. I don't want to do it just as a punishment. It doesn't turn me on at all. And I consider it, like I said, a form of reaffirming in yourself the things that you know that women are inferior and man, men are superior. So if you turn yourself into a woman, you humiliated yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not in the 50s anymore. And whatever internalized homophobia or misogyny or other trauma you have, please work on that with professionals. Otherwise, you're just hiding from your true self.